in Swift language, sometimes we are not sure if a variable will be initialized uh, or not. It means if it will have always some value or not. Sometimes it's unpredictable. And in the, to handle somehow the situation, we use optionals. Let's say we have some variable, my number, which is a data type integer. If we try to print out this number, it's not initialized, it has no value. We can get error variable, my number used before being initialized. Obviously something is wrong here. Let's modify it a little bit. Modification is that now we set nil to this variable and we try to print out it now. However, still we get error. Type integer doesn't conform to protocol. Obviously, something is wrong definitely here. What to do if somehow, sometimes we can get our variable can be set, initialized, and sometimes not. How to handle this situation? We can see that it's not that obvious from the, the two examples. Uh, the method, the way we can fix this problem is to use this question mark, which means that now our variable is optional integer. It means it can be nil or maybe it will have some value and if it has some value, it is integer. As we can see on playground on the right hand side, at start it's set to nil, which means basically it doesn't exist. But if we try to print this variable, we get something working, no errors, so everything is okay. It means that our variable is optional integer. As it is now, it's not initialized, but it can be handled by Swift. The value of this variable is nil. Actually, this variable doesn't exist as such. It has no, no value. Sometimes we can set some value for this optional. In this example, we initialize it and it's still optional integer, but at start we have some number. It doesn't mean that somewhere else down the code, it will still have some value. Maybe it will have nil, or basically after that, the values, there will be some value, not always nil. Maybe it will be nil, maybe not. It's unpredictable. And this unpredictability is handled here. Now it's set for five, but it's optional integer. It means now it's five, but later maybe it will not be five or nothing. And for this reason, here, instead of just five, we have optional five. Optional in parentheses, which doesn't look good. How to get out this optional, this mark that this is optional. To get out this optional, we use forced unwrapping and it means that we can use exclamation mark. This is in the line here. Again, my number is optional integer. As it is now, it's initialized to five. But now I use exclamation mark after variable to unwrap the real value of this integer. If we remove it completely, we get nothing here, as we can see, because it's not initialized. And this is five, again, okay. So now, thanks to this exclamation mark, which means force unwrapping, we remove this optional stuff. And let's say our, our variable is, and here we can write it in more obvious way 
or variables 5. This optional is removed. Okay, so this is one method. Another one, the other one is that we can check if the value is nil. Because if it's not initialized and this is optional, it means it can be nil. It is nil at start. So we have our variable, this optional integer is initialized. And if we don't know if it was initialized or not, we can check it. If it doesn't equal nil, this condition should return bool, true or false. If this my number is not nil, we'll print out the unwrapped value. This is one of the ways we can handle this not clear situation about our variable. We check it and if it's not nil, we unwrap it. This is forced unwrapping. We use this exclamation mark. However, there's other way we could use to reveal our uh, optional variable. Let's say again we have five and we call it optional binding. And this is a little bit more, it looks a little bit more complicated. I will unwrap, I will uncomment all this. Okay. And how this optional binding works? One method is forced unwrapping. I showed it previously. Now we use optional binding to reveal value of variable, which is optional. Again, we have optional integer initialized with value 5. And now we use, for optional binding, we use if var, if var or if let. There are two possibilities, it depends on situation. Let's say we have if var. If this exists, if this is true, it means that this inside code will be executed. It means we take temporary some other variable and try to compare it to our uh, optional variable. And if this works, we can use another temporary variable like this one just to print it. Or alternatively, we can just print it. We can just print our temporary variable. So it means that for optional binding, we use if var or if let. We take some temporary variable and we want this variable have some value. It means this part of code will return logical true. And then we can use this temporary value, temporary variable to in our code. If this is not true because my number is not set, it means the second part will be executed. We could see it here. Now we can see this line is not true because it's not true because this way shows that our variable is nil. So obviously this doesn't make sense and this part of code will be executed. However, if it would be initialized, we use some temporary variable. This equation, this, this part of code does make sense and we will have executed this part because this block of code is executed if this part is true. This is basically all about optionals. A very important thing, we read this, that my number is optional integer. 
it could be optional double optional float whatever but just for example here we have integer and we have two ways of getting the value of this or checking the value of this optional variable first is forced unwrapping and second one more let's say elegant is optional binding i explained i explained in the second stage of this lesson this is basically all you need to know about optionals in swift